this is our new opportunity to come out here and make a statement in our first game of the season. Get on three. One, two, three. Get out there. Get out there. Get out there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. My journey in Vietnam starts now. I got a call to go play pro ball in Vietnam uh, for Saigon Heat. So I thought it was fake. And then I started to see more pictures and videos and you know the fan base and everything about Saigon Heat. So I kind of started to believe it. I kind of just went along with it. I just felt like I should have just took the opportunity. So yeah, now I'm here. So I played basketball first college, and then I actually didn't work out for me. So I actually sat out basically a whole year and just started to work with my parents at their uh, pho restaurant. Uh, before I went to Vietnam, my mom slipped a, a, a photo, a photo of my grandfather. So. Well, she actually gave me like an address. Hopefully one day go back to where she grew up and go find my grandparents' grave and, you know, and go show my respect to them by burning scent candles and praying to them and, you know, just meeting them. I don't know if this is going to be a, a possible task because, yeah, I don't have the time right now. I'm just too busy with practices and games, so. Probably after the season. Hello and welcome to Talk Vietnam. Richard Nguyen, the newest heritage player of Saigon Heat basketball team, first set his foot in Vietnam in April 2019 and soon became a star of the team. This pointing guard, shooting guard, has come all the way from the basketball team in Evergreen High School in Seattle, United States, to play professional basketball league in his country of origin, Vietnam. But as many people say, it is bigger than just basketball. As for Richard himself, the journey back home is full of emotion and surprises that he could never imagine before. Join us today on Talk Vietnam as we discover that special journey with Richard Nguyen. Hello, Richard. Welcome to the show. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm fine. Good, good. So how's it going so far after five months coming back to Vietnam? Um, it's, been a, it's been a wild experience, you know. Um, very first time here in Vietnam, and um, I would have never thought I would be here, you know, representing, you know, the, the basketball team here in Vietnam, so. How was your adaptation to the life here and the basketball team here? Oh, man, I mean, it was crazy, you know. I mean, I would have never thought Vietnam would have been so developed, you know. Okay. You know, growing up, my mom always used to play footages of Vietnam, you know, like cooking shows and, you know, just the lifestyle. And, you know, I would have never thought that Vietnam would have been, you know, skyscrapers now with so many buildings. You had no idea about Vietnam before? I would, no, I mean, I, wow. I knew about Vietnam, but I just, I didn't know that it was, you know, so developed. Oh. I, 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 I didn't know, so. How did you find a love for basketball? Um, that's a good question. I mean, it's all, you know, basketball has always been a, a background in my life. Um, you know, although I haven't been playing when I was such, at a young age, like, you know, five or six years old, um, I started to have a love for the game when I was about, I'd say, 13 years old. 13, 13 years yeah. old, started? Yeah. yeah, so ever since then, it's just, you know, I've had the love for the game ever since. But what was the moment that you realized, I'm going to do this for my job? I want to play basketball professionally in the future. Um, I'd say uh, eighth grade summer. Um, I was what, about 14 years old, and I remember being uh, one of the one of the weakest kids, like, I was just so bad at basketball. And I've, I've always been, uh, you know, been talked down on and about how I would never be able to achieve anything, you know, mm -hmm. growing into a basketball player. And so I've always had that, that thought of, you know, always working hard. And um, it, just, it just clicked, you know, up until my, my high school year. That's when I took about it seriously. This is what I want to do with my rest of my life, mm -hmm. you know. Do you see yourself as someone who has, you know, the natural skill that you born with it, or someone who need to take practice much to get better? Um, it was crazy. Um, my whole life, ever since when I started playing basketball, um, I really trained myself. Like that, we I lived near elementary school, mm -hmm. and I remember, you know, every single day for the summer, I would 
wake up six o'clock in the morning and I'd go to that elementary school and I'd have a tennis ball and a regular basketball and I'd go there and train by myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I would look on YouTube, you know, it, yeah. it's crazy, but I'd look on YouTube, you know, how to, well, how to work on your jump shot or how do you work on handles. Um, I'd, get, I'd get made fun for it, but you know, I was, just, I was just a basketball fanatic. I would just always look up on YouTube how to get better and, you know, and it helped a lot. It helped a lot. Okay. I want to hear your experience or your feeling about that phone call when you get the phone call to play for Cyclone Heat at that time. Um, to be really honest with you, I thought it was fake. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, um, when I heard about the opportunity, like, I just, I really brushed it off. Like, really? Yeah, like, I just... It was crazy. Like I, I literally like declined the phone call. Really? And I was just like, like calling from Saigon. Yeah, or? and I was just like, okay, this is this is this is fake. Like this is just a waste of my time. Um, but eventually, the, the the company just started to reach out to me more and mm. you know send me photos. And I started yeah. as I started to see photos. That was when I was like, oh wow, this is. I think this is really really legit. You know, they got a huge fan base. They got you know Facebook and Instagram and you know so. That was when I kind of just. That was when I knew it was real and I. Richard Nguyen was born in 1999 in Seattle, Washington, to Vietnamese parents with six other siblings. His mom, Yen Võ, works for her own restaurant and always reminds him of his homeland, Vietnam, by the food she makes. At the age of 13, Richard discovered his talent for basketball and went on to play for the Evergreen Varsity Basketball, the highest ranking in high school for four years. After being found by his profile on Instagram, Richard Nguyen landed in Ho Chi Minh City in late April 2019 to join Saigon Heat and started his incredible journey here. At that time when you make the decision to to go back to Vietnam, yeah. I mean, there's many factors. Uh, a new place, yeah. a new opportunity. This is your home country. Yeah. Um, what is the factor that affects you the most? I mean, I think it's just a, like, a, like a new opportunity. Yeah. I mean, all my life, you know, I've always just never settled for nothing less. Like, I've always told myself, I'm going to be a basketball player. You mm -hmm. know, that's what, that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. Um, it was definitely like a, one of the hardest decisions in my life to really you know, leave, leave my family, Sure. you know? So at first I really did not want to go. Like mm -hmm. I was just telling, I told my mom about it and my mom didn't even think this was real either. Like she mm -hmm. was like basketball in Vietnam, what? Yeah. you know? <laughs> and um, yeah, so she was just telling me, you just go, to, go back to work. You don't need to, yeah. that's just fake stuff. And as I told my girlfriend and my uncles and stuff, they're like, take the opportunity, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but at first, I, I literally didn't want to go. I kind of told Khan and everything. I was like, I don't think I'm going to go. You know, I can't leave home. And um, fast forward later, I thought, I thought long and hard about the opportunity. And, um, you know, just for the experience, you know. So, you know, now I'm here. So Saigon Heat, you make a decision. Yep. Uh, what did you pre prepare for that? Man, when I, when I, you know, finally made the decision to go play for them and, and uh, you know, came out my life to them, um, it has been nonstop. Like, I, I just that's when I kind of quit my I quit my my job with my parents yeah. because they knew that I had to start taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I started going going crazy. I started training about two to three times a day, mm -hmm. um, morning, in the afternoon, and night. Um, you know, trying to perfect my game until I came out here. And so, you know, as when I came out here, as I came out here, I had already had been skilled, but it was really just. Um, adapting to a professional basketball league. You know, mm -hmm. I've never played um, college basketball and it was, it's very organized. And here in the VBA, it's, it's very organized. It's professional basketball, you know, mm -hmm. so um, it's, a, it's a hard task, you know, against yeah. these guys, you know, um, all these Vietnamese guys here, they're all professional, you know what I mean? So they can <laughs> play basketball. I would have never thought about it, but they okay. can play basketball. What was the reaction from your teammate to a new guy who just came in? They were really excited. <laughs> you know, they said, they said that, um, they had seen the draft and they were excited to, you know, start working with me. I remember my first day going into, uh, like, into the gym, and everyone was just excited to see me. They were introducing me to me, but, you know, like right when we, I had came into the gym, like it was all business. Like everyone just, so it was like, okay, nice to meet you. Like we're mm -hmm. excited for you here. Let's get to work. So, how is it different from playing at Evergreen High School back in Seattle? It's it's really different, you know. So in the states where I'm from, like Seattle, it's mm -hmm. 
it's very very street ball like you know oh, like okay. it, it's you know it's not organized you know so <laughs> when I, professional leagues exactly right? yeah. exactly so when I came out here I kind of I had kind of started to do my street ball stuff but then like it just it just wasn't cutting it's it, it was not cutting it so I had to adapt I had to adapt okay. to you know just being solid you know so well is it hard for you to change your style of playing um I would say at first it was you know I was getting frustrated because I wasn't I'm a you know I feel like I'm a scorer and it was kind of hard for me to to score hmm. you know so I kind of had to adapt in, with the system how to score with the system and you know how to be a, a, a leader for the team hmm. so how long did it take for you to actually get along with the team and now it's become like a very important positions um I'd say when I when when when, when the whole team had actually got together we clicked just like that and um I adapted up okay. to about pretty fast, man. Pretty fast, pretty fast. Yeah, I say <laughs> that's pretty fast. Uh, how how did the coach help you? Man, David Singleton, he helped me a lot. I mean, I'd say he's he's got to be the best coach I've ever had. I mean, um, he knows he knows my game. Um, he knew when I came out here, I was playing too fast, and he's mm -hmm. helped me slow down and see the game more. You know, see the floor and everything. Um, so he's definitely made me. Um, I'd say a pro, pro basketball Did player. Did he push you too hard? Oh. Obstacle and challenges? Yo, for sure, for sure. Like I said, like, um, there were times in the beginning of the season where I'd get so frustrated and I just don't know what, you know, how to score and, you know, I don't know how to get my teammates involved and, you know, when, every day in practice, you know, as the mistakes that I did, he he would be hard on me because you know he would, he 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 see the potential in me, so he he'd want to push me to you know fix those mistakes. So when when it comes to game time situations, it'd be natural. Yeah. And so. Ball handling, dribbling, these are the basic skills that heritage player Richard Mutton has to practice day by day with his peers. Compared to the overall level of Saigon Heat players, Richard is an effective ball handler, which is in line with Saigon Heat's fast-paced philosophy. But before making this progress, Richard Newton has to train very hard. He worked extensively on building strength, flexibility and endurance into his legs and hips. In the third pick of the 2019 VBA draft by Saigon Heat, Richard Nguyen impressed the professionals thanks to his aggressive play, effective defence and was present at every hot spot on the pitch. Probably one of the best teammates on the team. He speaks Vietnamese, uh, he gets along well with the local players and uh, he's my type of guy. I, I, I enjoy coaching him and uh, we have a good bond and so I'm very happy with Richard. I think he's very motivated, he's dedicated to basketball. Uh, he tries so hard, he thinks about basketball every day, and uh, because he does that, uh, good things happen for him. He works hard. If you work hard, good things will happen for you. After days of hard work, Richard became one of the current standout top players of Saigon Heat team and won the most valuable player title several times. The playoffs were coming in the next few days, so the players and coach David Singleton of Saigon Heat had to concentrate on sprint trainings with the determination to gain a ticket to the finals. I know playing basketball requires you know, the strength, the skills, the mental toughness. Yeah. You mentioned that the street style basketball. How do you prepare, how do you improve that for yourself? Um, I mean, I feel like when you when when you play basketball, it's it's. When I first actually came out here, I knew the game was obviously about, you know, playing hard and everything. But coach, he really made me see the game, and he told me that you know being a pro basketball player now is it's it's seventy five it's seventy seventy five percent mental. Like the game is all mental. Like these small details is what makes you a pro. You know, mm -hmm. so I'd say you know mental mental is like the biggest part of everything. Well, mentor. Yeah. And if you can, you know, create yourself in terms of skill mm -hmm. um, and technical ability mm -hmm. in terms of point, rebound, assist, steal, and blocks. Yeah. Uh, which one that you are the strongest? I'd say defense. Defense. Yeah. Defense. 
um, I feel like my game uh, uh, revolves around defense. You know, I've always, I always go into the game with a lot of energy and, um, you know, just taking pride on defense, you know, not trying to allow my man to score on me, you know, that have that mentality like this person in front of you is not going to score. And um, I feel like once I'm able to, to do my job on defense, everything will come, will come through offense, will, come, mm -hmm. will, will flow through offensively. So you've been playing defense for the, for the whole journey uh, since you started playing basketball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defense, so offense and defense is, is like the, is the main part of the game, really. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel like defense is the main, is that like mm -hmm. if, you're, if, you're, if your team can't, if your team allow, uh, doesn't allow the other team to score, and I feel like that's the stronger team. So what seems to be the most difficult uh, cover for you? Um, I would say, I'd still say kind of slowing down, really, you know, because I'm, I'm, I've always had like a motor in my head to just want to just keep going like a thousand miles per hour. I, I, I'm definitely slowed down as, you know, a lot as, as well before I came out here, but it's still kind of, it's kind of the same thing, kind of still need to slow down, you know, relax, get everyone into the offense, you know. Just being a, a real point guard. Comparing to what you've been playing before back in the state, mm -hmm. how tough is com is competitor here? It's really competitive. Yeah. You know, I'm, of course, in the states, I've I play with you know talented guys, very talented guys. You know, but um, I'm not gonna say like just Seattle is just street ball, but um, you know, there's there's plenty of guys there who know how to play very organized basketball. Um, but here, it's just you know, it's very professional. You know, it's. There's some guys here who 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 can play like it's street ball, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, a full forty four the full the full forty minute quarters of the game is you know it's very it's very organized. Like we're we're constantly running plays, um, trying to execute. You know, and I say in the states, it's kind of like you're just free. You're just free. You're when you're playing a pickup game, it's just free ball. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like simple basketball, but you're still you're it's still street ball because you're not running plays or anything. Yeah. You know? How about any? match during the you know the whole time that you've been playing here any game that really that you enjoy the most i think last game <laughs> last game uh when we went to to go to the finals i feel like that was a okay. uh, a really emotional game you know that's the derby match with uh, uh, uh the city wings the city wings yeah yeah yep. so we ended up taking the series 2-0 advancing to the finals um it just that was a whole a whole bunch for me because I just you know I feel like the last few seconds of the game I just like everything just soaked in you know and I started to reflect like wow this I came a long way you know it's my first year here I, you know I came here to help you know lead this team to make history and um, just an incredible feeling you know to be here. How's the audience here in Vietnam? Oh man, they are strong, strong. <laughs> they are a good crowd. I tell you that they just. They're very, they're loving, they're caring, they're, they're just so fun. They always come with a lot of excitement. The match between Saigon Heat and Ho Chi Minh City Wings was held at Ho Xuân Hương Sporting Event Hall in Ho Chi Minh City. In the last three seasons, Saigon Heat had not yet enjoyed the triumph of winning in the knockout matches and they were very determined to crack down when encountering Ho Chi Minh City Wings in this match. Saigon Heat started the game with an aggressive stance to keep their dream alive. After the opening whistle, both Ho Chi Minh City teams tried to use an attacking strategy. However, with its more diverse array of attacking threats, Saigon Heat held the lead after the first period by a score of 16-12. Richard Nguyen's attack and tireless rush contributed significantly to this win. Richard Nguyễn á là một cái thành viên mới của Sài Gòn Hit ở mùa giải DB năm nay. Nhưng mà mặc dù anh là một tên tuổi mới nhưng mà cái Richard Nguyễn là một trong những cầu thủ quan trọng nhất của đội hiện nay. Lối chơi của cậu ấy rất là máu lửa, đặc biệt là về tốc độ cũng như là sức mạnh nhưng mà cũng không kém phần kỹ thuật. Điểm mạnh của cậu ấy là rất là tuân thủ chiến thuật của luyện viên cũng như là rất là tin tưởng vào đồng đội. Richard next great player, very strong, you know, pushes the team a lot. So, you know, he'll, he'll be a very important key to win the game. Just play it strong, bring it home, let's take a win, you know, and let's go to the play and let's go to the finals. Nói chơi của Richard Nguyễn là nhanh nhẹn, khéo léo, kèm theo đó là một chút gửi lắc léo trong đó. Richard Nguyễn cố lên! To fulfill fans' expectations, Richard Nguyễn shown and scored 10 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists and 4 steals the ball during the game.
Saigon Heat became the first team to enter the final of the Vietnam Basketball Association after defeating Ho Chi Minh City Wings with a score of 74-71 in Game 2 of the playoffs. How is the feeling of contributing to your team to reach the final? Man, I, I feel like that when we went back into that locker room... Um, yeah, first time after four years, very you know, special for Saigon Heat. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone just looked at each other like, you know, you know we did it. You know, we, we deserve this. I, you know, I feel like everyone, each and everyone knows that, you know, from the beginning of the season, like, we've been, we've been putting 110% every single day you know the next day we always try to be better than we were yesterday and i feel mm -hmm. like that mentality that we've always had from the beginning of seasons what got us now got us got us to the finals now yeah i read about you on some interviews i'm going to quote you one more time yeah you were saying the goal is to not only be a better basketball player but to be a better man yeah i do this for my family could yeah. you kind of explain it what do you mean by that man so i i, I stand by that quote very strongly um I feel like basketball is not just only a sport, but it, it reflects on you of how you become a man because I'd say that by um, just, I kind of look at it as like both ways of being, being a man and, just not just, and just a basketball player. Like for example, um, like as for being a coach, um, if you're, if, I think my, for, if you're being a coach and as a player, when every, everything that you're taking in and, 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 and you're hearing, you just, you just soak everything up and you just want to be better. And I feel like in life, if you want to be, you know, to be a better man, um, whether you're at any other job or in, you hear any bosses talk to you, 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 you always take the advice and you soak it in and you always just try to be better, you know, so. You said family is very important for you. Mm -hmm. how, how did your mom support you with basketball player career? So she's always supported me ever since um, ever since I picked up the basketball, you know, I, there were there were times where I was in uh, eighth grade playing for a select basketball team, and I'd have games about that were like 40 minutes away from my house, mm. and we'd have games on uh, school nights, and there were times where I wouldn't get home till like midnight, and she would stay home, and when I would walk through the door, she'd be like, "Where were you been?" And I'd tell her I just got back from a game, and like she wouldn't believe me, so I'd have my coach come to the door and t and have my coach talk to her and. And my coach would just explain to her, like, you know, no, Richard's not doing nothing wrong. He's, he's playing basketball, and we just have late games. And, you know, I, ever since then, she just knew how driven I was, you know, from the day I picked up a basketball. You know, I've always, you know, ever since after school, I'd always go play basketball. I wouldn't come home till late. You know, I'd wake up in the morning just to go train, and she'd see me, and she'd be like, did you eat yet? I'd, I would skip meals just to go yeah. play basketball, you know? Yeah. So. Have you got to do, like, any fight or argument with your mom about basketball? There was a few times where I think she told me she just said, um, you know, she she told me like, do you have a backup plan? You know, yep. you know, if basketball doesn't work out, then what's your yep. plan? What's you your know? backup plan? But I'll be honest with you, my <laughs> back, no back I didn't have no backup plan. Like this is the I, only way. Yeah, exactly. Like yep. I, I just told myself like I don't want to. I, I'm going to commit my life to basketball. There's no backup plan. Yeah. You Sometimes know? when you have backup plan, you lose the focus, exactly, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's the only way you have to go, right? Exactly. Exactly. Put you under pressure. Exactly. exactly. So how did your mom feel now after five months in Vietnam? All I can say is, <laughs> Mom, I made it. Yeah. I made it. <laughs> yeah. I made it. So uh, um, I'm, I'm sure she's really proud, man. I love my mom so much. Yeah. You know, I'm happy so. for you. Happy for her, too. Yeah. When you came back here, she actually gave you a photo mm -hmm. of your grandfather. Yep. Uh, he actually, uh, your mom's foster father. Yeah. And you came back here to find his grave. Yeah. Yep. Tell me about that story. Man, that, um, like I said, you know, all my life, my mom's, like we'd have barbecues and family parties, birthdays. And um, what always, uh, when I was, what always stood out to me was, um, you know, I, I, I see like cousins and stuff come over, but mm -hmm. my mom would never tell me like, that these are your real cousins or, you know, this is your, your real uncle, you know, your blood uncle, you know? And I just kind of still like, you know, where are, you know, I, where's my mom's family? Like, as I seen those reflected on my life, I was just like, I, were, I really wonder where my mom's family is. And my mom used to tell me that when I was younger, she'd tell me stories like, you know, you have a sister, I have a sister mm -hmm. and I have brother and sister, but they're in Vietnam. And um, I just, I lost all contact with them, you know? and. Um, it all started really when 
she uh, gave me that that photo and said, mm -hmm. um, "You're, you know, my my dad, which is my grandfather, uh, grave is in is in is in Vietnam." My mom used to tell me she, you know, before I, before she, I even started to come out here, she was just telling me, um, "Go, for, I want you to go dope yang for." Uh, you know, Ray. for yeah, yeah, yeah for uh, for your grandfather, and go back there and ask people, um, do you know this man? And I'm like, mom, like you just can't go to a spot where it's over like 15, 20 years and just ask for this person. Like I, you know, I just thought I like, know, right? It's only a photo. It's not so clear. Now. Exactly, exactly. And I just kind of thought she was kind of crazy. I'm just like, mom, I don't, I don't think you get it. You know, but hey, I guess supposedly, um, if you go to this uh, location and you ask. For for this person, I guess my grandfather was really known. Tôi tên là Long, có ba tên là ông Mai Dính. Không biết thì ngày xưa có nuôi một đứa con nuôi tên là Yến. Cô với nó là thân lắm, nghĩa là thương nhau lắm Sau khi mà lớn lên rồi thì Yến tự đi ra, tự lập đi kiếm sống So my mom back home, she was adopted by a Vietnamese family who actually owned an orphanage um, From what she can remember is all she had was a sister growing up All the way up and about until her 20s, until she went to America A few years after she lost uh, all her contacts with her, her sibling thì một cái bữa chiều hôm đó đang ngồi bán thì có hai 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 cậu trai lại hỏi thì mới hỏi là cô phải là cô lon mới không thấy xào không thì nói chung cũng ngạc nhiên cũng sợ vừa hồi hộp không biết ai làm lỡ kiếm mình thì cái cháu nó mới trả lời nó là có người chỉ thì mới móc điện thoại ra mới mở tấm hình lên thì đưa tấm hình của ba là ông ba dính con báo tin mừng cho cô nói là con của cô kim đó bây giờ nó đang về về việt nam Tin tức hôm nay là lâu lắm rồi lâu lắm. Nói chung là từ bữa tới nay là không có ngủ được luôn Chỉ tự, 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 tự mong tới ngày gặp mặt cháu mình để mà liên lạc được với mẹ nó thôi locker room it was just I, I didn't even know what to say I just a whole mix of emotions like the first thing that really came to my mind was my mom it just, I felt like when I walked out to go see my family like I felt like my mom was with me and surprising oh yeah I'm glad you found her yeah for now when you look back to that memory I mean what's going on in your mind now just just to know that you know that I, I'm making history not just for you know just Saigon heat but you know for our family um, 
I'm the first one in my family out of all my siblings to come back to Vietnam. And um, that's just big. It's like, I, I still get emotional when I think about it because like, um, you know, coming from nothing, it just, it just means a lot, you know? Um, it's just hard to explain, um, you know, just knowing that, you know, my mom knows that there's family, there, her family is still alive and, you know, just for my brothers and sisters to know that we have, you know, we know that my mom has family, it's just, it's just big, it's just Yeah, man, I feel incredible. you, man. sorry for that. Uh, what did your mom tell you about this meeting? When, um, when did we did, uh, like the meeting here or when the... Yeah, when you first met with Ji Luang. She, she told me, um, like, you, you did it, you really found my family and she was just telling me, um, you know, she was just lost the words herself. She just said that, um, you know, you, you're really, you're really special. You know, when you found your, when you found my family, you know, it just, it opened so much for her. Like, just, just, just knowing that, you know, her family was still alive, and, you know, for me to go visit her, her grandparents' grave, my grandparents' grave, and, you know, go dope yang and everything. It was just a huge achievement, huge achievement. So are you keeping contact with Yu Lang now? Yeah, or? yeah. I was, I was literally just with her last night. We were eating. She's only your family now, only family member now yeah. in, in Saigon. Yeah, yeah. So I actually have, um, so there, was, there were nine of them. Hmm. Um, I think five passed away, five passed away. So there, there are only four. So there's my uncle and then my auntie, my two aunties and then my mom. So my mom, out of, out of all her siblings, my mom was the only one who, who went to the States. Wow. Yeah. And before that, you had no idea, no memory about Yi Luang whatsoever. No, I, I just remember growing up, like when I'm going through photos, I just remember that one photo that um, my mom gave me from my auntie and she said, she said, this is her sister. But when I was, when I was at such a young age, um, I see my mom's skin color and she was black and then I see my auntie and then I was like, mom, this isn't your sister, she's white, you know? So um, that's what my mom used to tell me. She was like, I was adopted, you know? But at, at a young age, I, I didn't know what that meant. You know, she'd tell me Vietnamese, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what that meant. And so up until I got older, my siblings would, my older siblings told me that my mom was adopted and, I, and everything. I understood, I, I understood everything. But how, how is your Vietnamese when you able to communicate with the line? Yeah, I mean, my Vietnamese isn't very so good, but it's good enough to, to yeah. you know, to have a, for another Vietnamese person to understand, have an understanding of what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So you meet the whole family now? Yep, I met Back the whole in family. Vietnam? Wow, family. so now you have a family in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. I would have never thought that I had any family in Vietnam. Yeah. And Saigon Heath is a very special family, oh, what yeah. they did for you. Oh, for sure. I really, really appreciate it as oh, well. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Do you think Vietnam give you much more opportunity than just playing basketball? Oh, for sure. I for sure think there is a lot more opportunities out here just than just playing basketball. Okay. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. So the first thing that we went to do today was uh, go go visit my aunt's house and everything, and you know just go see where they're living at. Then after that, we went to uh, the graveyard where my our grandparents were buried. Go show our respects by burning the same candles, uh, dropping off flowers, fruits, you know, just have a conversation. That was a lot of fun. You know, I feel like out of all this, um, this is just more motivation for me to, you know, work harder in life. It's just, you can't ex explain the feeling of how much I appreciate this. Finally, I'm home. Well, finally, you are home. Yeah. So what, what does it give you motivation? Why does it give you motivation, more motivation to live here? Um, you know, I just, just being a, a, a role model, you know, not just for my family, um, you know, but for, you know, the kids growing up here in, you know, in, in Vietnam, you know, to see a basketball player like me, you know, um, you know, they can do the same thing, you know, if they just, you know, work hard in life and, you know, not give up, you know, and, you know, keep striving for success, then they can, you know, they can do what they love. Mm -hmm. So what is your plan now in Vietnam? My plan, um, 
you know, to make Do you history. think about the future? <laughs> I didn't think about the future. I'm kind of still like, you know, taking, taking uh, you know, each day, you know, step by step. Um, you know, the goal is really to, you know, to make history. You know, we have a championship game coming up. Um, so, you know, the goal is to, to win a championship, make history, and, um, you know, you know, put on, put on for this, the hometown Seattle and, you know, just show my, show my, my family and friends that, uh, you know, I'm doing what I love. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I worked hard for this. Did you have a chance to go uh, across the country to see uh, your auntie and all, miss all the family and oh, yeah. travel around a little bit? Oh, yeah. Um, just knowing that, you know, there's family here, you know, and, you know, say, for example, like, it can be, I can be, you know, say if I'm done with basketball or, you know, I have any, you know, you know, my kid that's on the way, I can always bring them back here in Vietnam, you know, to show, you know, my mom's, my mom's family, you know, grandparents, it can be from where they used to live, it can be their, you know, their graveyards, you know, just come back here and, you know, being here and showing them the roots of Vietnam, you know, where my, my family is really from. Yeah. As a kid who grew up in the state and now come back here and look mm -hmm. for family and finally find your home here. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about your root, your like, Vietnamese origin? It was, it's just an eye opener. Um, me definitely coming here in Vietnam uh, is definitely humbled me more. Um, I'd say just by uh, really appreciating things, appreciating everything, you know, what I have back home. Um, you know, just being here and, you know, seeing the different type of lifestyle it is from the States and, you know, Vietnam, you know, it makes you, it makes you more humbled, you know, being, you know, being a kid from the States, really. Would that change your way of looking at life now? Oh, definitely. After five months here in Vietnam? Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, it's, it just, it, you know, a real eye opener uh, to see how, you know, to see where, you know, how Vietnam is being developed and, you know, how going to, you know, in the States where it's already, you know, huge developed cities, um, you know, you just look at life and you just see everything different, you know, with the third eye perspective. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about any plan to bring back your mom here? Oh, yeah, definitely. I did. Um, so we actually talked about it. Um, I think she what wanted What would she to, react to that? <laughs> um, she said uh, her and her auntie, I think they are t arguing about who can make, you know, the better food or something like that. <laughs> so what I think they're definitely, if my mom, when my mom comes back, they're going to be making tons of food and, you know, showing, and then my auntie is going to be showing my mom, like, different types of foods, you know, that she's never, probably never even heard of. So For uh, basketball, uh, industry in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of it? I mean, in terms of the potential to grow and uh, the place of opportunities for all the overseas Vietnamese players to come back? It's a great basketball league. Um, you know, being in this league, it really makes you, it really, it really will help you into shaping you into a pro. Like, you know, me coming, being here, a 19 year old kid. Um, you know, very from my first year to adapt to a professional basketball league, it was tough. It's it's really tough. Um, but you know, once you kind of get the hang of it, and you know, you start to learn each and every single day, you just you just fall in love with the game of basketball even more. Me and not having family here, and you know, having the fans here, like it just feels like it's. You know, I feel like I am home. You know, I feel like it's. You know, this is my family now. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a place where you feel comfortable. 2019 has witnessed a phenomenal season of VBA. Breathtaking games and thrilling performance from all six teams. Moreover, we also saw the unbelievable plays from all the athletics, especially from the heritage players. Khoa Chen from Saigon Heat, Justin Young and Henry Nguyen from Thanglong Warriors, Tam Ding and Sang Ding from Cần Thơ Catfish, Horace Nguyen and Chris Dierker from Da Nang Dragons, Vincent Nguyen, Michael Soy from Ho Chi Minh City Wings and Richard Nguyen for the first time in VBA were not only becoming the symbol of their team, but also the sport idols and great inspiration amongst the youth. The bóng Đà Nẵng Dragon là cái đội bóng đầu tiên mà Hore được khoác về cái sự uh, chuyên nghiệp bóng rổ của Hore và thêm điều đó là nhà bên nhà bà nội với nhà ông ngoại Hore là cũng người Đà Nẵng hết thì khóa cái áo Đà Nẵng rất là đặc biệt về cái trái tim của Hore. I mean, there's always things you can uh, improve on, but uh, in, in general, I'm pretty happy, but I'll, I'll strive to be even better. 
after the stunning performance of heritage players, VBA continues to provide all players of Vietnamese descent with the opportunity to showcase their talent and passion for basketball, as well as offering them a great chance for further career development in their homeland, Vietnam. My wrist is good, uh, trying to get better, uh, trying to get back to 100% uh, to get ready for the SEA Games and to get ready for ABL. Um, you know, that, those are the main goals uh, because we're out here representing uh, Vietnamese basketball. So that's number one for us. Uh, even though we want to win a championship for the VBA, we want to win back to back. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a long, tough journey. Uh, but you got to stay consistent. You got to keep on working hard and believe that you come back better and you can do anything that you believe in. This is where my blood runs thick, you know, this is where my family is from. So uh, if I can just inspire uh, other Vietnamese basketball players for the next generation. To prepare for basketball competition at the SEA Games 30 in the Philippines, the Vietnam Basketball Federation has proposed a list of 18 attending players to the General Department of Sports, 11 of whom are overseas Vietnamese who have been competing at VBA, such as Tam Ding, Sang Ding, Justin Young, Khoi Trần, Stephen Tuấn Tú, and also Richard Nguyễn. Their skills in playing, the continuous effort, as well as their professional style are some of the important factors to help Vietnam basketball team compete with others in the region. Are there many Vietnamese Americans playing basketball? Oh, there's tons. There's, yeah. there's tons. There's tons in, in, in the States. There's tons of them. Tons yeah. of them. Um, they kind of, I mean, now that they see me doing this, you know, they, of course they're going to, you know, they're... I always get, you know, full of inbox messages, you know, how can I come play for Saigon Heat too? I know, too? right? <laughs> Use like the, you know, branding now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just like, can I come play for Saigon Heat? Can I come? You know, hopefully in the future, maybe, you know, I'd love to see someone back in Seattle play for, you know, come play for the VBA, just so they could, you know, they can see the different type of basketball it is, you know, you know, that'd be pretty fun, you know. Um, but definitely me being here and seeing uh, other heritage players, like, there's tons of them around the world, and they're not even from the States, you know, and yeah. that's just pretty cool to see different uh, Vietnamese Americans, mm -hmm. you know, and see how they play different type of, you know, different type of basketball. It's, yeah. it's a very cool experience, very cool experience. So if someone want to come back here and asking for your advices, what would you say to them? Advice? Um, <laughs> man, work hard each and every single day because it will pay off, and yeah. do not cheat the grind. Wow, Don't and especially the for the Vietnamese American, this could be their home, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a different sure. feeling, not just a basketball. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good food here. Got very <laughs> good food here. You know, um, everything, anything that you need. You know, Vietnam, Vietnam has it. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, thank you. That's the story of Richard Nguyen, the newest heritage player of Saigon Heat, and I hope he continues to uh, bring more win to the team. And uh, this is a journey that full of emotion and surprises, and finally he find it home. And I hope in the future, maybe more overseas Vietnamese uh, who come back here to live and to find it home better. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for Talk Vietnam today. My name is Quoc I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.